Okay, I've been wanting to make a video about this movie for a long time because, let me just adjust, <laughs> um, because it, it, it it's like, it's three years old, it's, um, uh, it's gonna be four years old this year, it came, it still seems like it just came out, like, I remember the, the stuff people were saying about this movie, I remember just like... <laughs> Uh, I remember Amanda Fuller, who plays Brittany Murphy, uh, yes, we're looking at the Brittany Murphy story, which is a Lifetime biopic, and I, um, we may look at the Brittany, Mur the Brittany Spears one, but I can't promise you that. Um, I, I just, this, I actually, I remember when Amanda Fuller was posting stuff on Twitter where she talked about her getting the role of Brittany. And she basically, I remember reading this, you might have to find it on Twitter if I don't find it, because I don't know if I'm going to be able to, but it was pinned on her account for a while, but it's, it's, this movie came out 2014, it's now 2018, what's up? I know I'm kind of late to reviewing this, but there's actually no real, like, movie review about this. There's a, a girl that has talked about the movie, but it's more about, um, how this lit girl, what she got from the movie was she doesn't want to be famous, like, money, oh yeah, like, I'll take the money, fame, nah, which I feel like a lot of celebrities could say the same thing, um, where they're like, yeah, I, I like money, you know, but I don't like the fame, which fame is, you know, you just followed around and every time you, I don't know, if you, if you fart in a room, uh, it's probably gonna be, you know, on T oh, on TMZ like the very next hour at least. If not, it's probably gonna be on TMZ sooner. So, yeah, um, nobody's really ever like talked to, like reviewed it. Um, there has been moments, there has been articles written about it where they say horrendous moments, you know, top ten horrendous moments. And, um, I actually did watch this movie through and through. I thought it was going to be harder to get to, get through, sorry, than it actually was. It was a most part depressing movie. Um, I don't know about you, but I have a hard time believing that her life was that depressing. Um, probably because it's... I don't know, I mean, I never knew this woman, obviously, but I, I am a huge fan of her, a lot of her work. Um, let's just get that out of the way. Um, I, I watch Uptown Girls, I watch Clueless, I like Little Black Book, I think even in my live reaction of the movie, which I don't know if I'm going to be posting it, because it's kind of long, and I feel like it's nothing, almost. I feel like, um, I even said, I even said I love Little Black Book. I love, I watched Ramen Girl, that was really good, um, it, her and 8 Mile, I actually re recently watched 8 Mile, like, two days in a row. I've seen a lot of her movies, I really like her, I think she's very talented, um, and, I don't know, I just have a hard, I just, this movie, the, the direction they went in, it, like, where they just were like, I feel like the main message, I feel like they were using Brittany Murphy as, like, this to get a message of like the paparazzi is horrible and, the, and Hollywood will kill you and that um, you know they're trying to basically sell this message of like um, there's a lot of into my next point there's a lot of moments in this movie where I was like that can't be true or that has to be BS and a lot of times, I mean, if when I'm I was watching this, I had to look up stuff, and I think there was a time there they would show the year on the screen, which you know, thank goodness, two thousand one, Brittany Murphy, okay, they say they bring up the Janis Joplin biopic, which is something she really was considered for, because because a lot of people don't know this, but Brittany Murphy could sing, um, well, I, people do know it now, but. Brittany Murphy could really sing. She had a great voice. She did a bunch of uncredited um, 
background singing and singing on people's other people's albums and she sang in happy feet and obviously and she's done other stuff um what was it about they bring up the janice joplin thing and <laughs> britney in the movie um so her agent at the time named jackie brings up that they want heroin chic like so basically Brittany says because this is something effective I'll probably put in the scene right here she says something effective someone you know skinnier and I'm lo I'm I looked up a picture of Brittany Murphy in 2001 and the girl didn't was skinny Brittany Murphy's always been rather skinny and so I didn't understand why it, <laughs> I'm like I understand with 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 body image issues you know women that are even like it doesn't matter if you're like to the bone like super skinny you have like a 20 inch waist I understand that women can see themselves as chunky but the fact that like the agent was insinuating that they want someone skinnier it's like Brittany Murphy was skinnier and it was skinny like I don't understand that whatsoever but and then they was even a part where she was filming clueless which where they said where some guy uh, they were shooting the makeover scene um, more about that in a second but after she's walking away um, there's some I guess I don't know if he's like a production designer or if he's like a guy that runs the lights or if he's a PA but he says something to the effect of like oh they'll have to put a whole bunch of makeup on that girl to make her look half way decent and he calls her chunky and I'm like I just have a hard time believing that because it, Brittany Murphy was never like I've never seen her on screen and thought like you know she's a little chunky I never I'm like I have a hard time believing this um, now I will say that the, you know, a lot of people will say, well, the girl that played her doesn't look a thing like her. Um, I'm not going to be like the same person that's saying, oh, like she doesn't look a thing like her. We know she doesn't look like Brittany Murphy. Um, it doesn't matter what wig she was wearing. I understand that. Um, she didn't really capture the essence of her either. I understand like you don't have to look exactly like a historical or figure or like a real person that you're playing um, but you have to at least capture the essence of them for instance in the Natalie Wood miniseries two-part miniseries thing the mystery of Natalie Wood um, the girl they hired to play her looked looked more like Natasha her her daughter than actually Natalie but she cat you know I was buying it I was like okay whatever her voice was a bit nasally and Natalie had this you know more of a soft tone voice and um you know I get it um but she still did a okay did a fine job um I wouldn't say she was probably the worst person choice to play Natalie um, but the problem was is that I think the greater sin in casting somebody um, I think a greater sin in not looking like a person is not capturing the essence because Brittany is so was so freaking bubbly and so perky and like mm, you know and funny and had this infectious laugh I mean if you look on IMDB a trademark of hers is her infectious laughter and she just had that contagious, like, like, a adorable laughter. Like, she was so adorable and bubbly and perky. And it's like, you know, I, she wasn't capturing that. I'm not going to, like, you know, shit all over this actress. Because I, I watched her last man standing. She's really funny. I like her in that. Um, I've only seen this actress in two things. This movie and Last Man Standing. I like her in Last Man Standing. Um, I'm not... Um, no matter, I, I do think, um, the movie, you know, she may have been a bit miscast, which this is like a universal <laughs> notion and truth, 
but I'm not I don't condone Britney's real life father um, basically cyberbullying her on Twitter and saying like she's too this she's too that and this is horrible da, da, da. I mean mm, now I think he rightfully you can rightfully show your distaste in a project especially when it's a person made it's a film based off of a real person and it's supposed to be based off of true events I think you have the right like if someone made um, it's an unauthorized biography piece they didn't there's I'll have to include the articles either in the video in the description but Amanda Fuller says they went based off of public record and none of the family members were consulted the mom wasn't talked to they didn't talk to um, um, the dad they didn't talk to um, the I mean anybody really um, I mean why not even at least talk to co-stars of films like Ashton Kutcher or Dakota Fanning or something you know I don't know, it's like, that's a no-no, I think, in making a biopic. The difference, and I'm, 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 I go back to this one because it was, um, I go back to this piece because it's like still kind of fresh in my mind, but with the mystery of Natalie Wood, at least they were talking to, you know, the sister and co-stars of Natalie Wood, like, <laughs> just that's a major no-no when you're making a biopic or a piece that's supposed to be based off true events you need to consult family members it's just that's a major no-no I'm just looking at my notes um, now this back to the part where um, they were showing First of all, Clueless, there was a historical error. Clueless was not filmed on a soundstage in a studio. It was filmed in locations. Um, I think even one of them was in Long Beach. Um, they filmed it in California, like p p p different places in California. They didn't film it on a soundstage. <sighs> um, even Amazon, if you buy it on Amazon, um, or you watch on Amazon. There's no way you can rent this movie. I wanted to rent it, and then that way, like, you know, because I had a feeling I wasn't going to like it. I've seen clips of this movie. I've seen trailers, and I'm just like, ugh. And, um, they, they make that mistake of, this is based off public record, and they didn't consult any family members, and, um, <laughs> uh, so they make that first mistake of doing that, and then also, it's on a sound stage, and the way they set up this shot, so they they are doing the makeover scene, and there's a shot in Clueless where, uh, you know, Dion and Cher are doing Ty's makeup, and she's got these like twisty like curler type things in her hair, and it's a close up, and Brittany Murphy's in the middle, and they're putting like you know lip stain or lip gloss lipstick whatever on and it's you know it's I remember it from the movie because I've seen the movie um but the way it made no sense as to like how it was in the frame and everything like I get it you're trying to be like oh like they're filming this scene but the director is behind the actors along with the camera so the cameras have so the actors have their back to the camera and they're not in a bathroom or like the bedroom there's no set it's like they're on a sound stage and they're just there's like lights and there's no set like they're just standing on a stage so I that's another thing I, I would bring up they're not facing the camera I think what it was was the person, the filmmaker, the director dropped the freaking ball and they were like, okay, I want to show like them making this scene and the ending of the makeover little montage sequence thing. But 
it didn't make any sense because like I just said like why the actors there's not a shot in the movie where the actors are facing their backs to the freaking camera okay it's a close up it's a montage I can't even show you guys what I mean just by the picture I'll show a picture but mm, like why like that was a mistake okay so I talked about the whole thing where she's like but they need heroin chic where they're acting like she was chunky in 2001 okay she wasn't I looked up a picture she was skinny okay I think they're making up dramatizations I feel like they should have put um, that in the freaking thing like the following dramatization because with biopics they add things in for drama to make it to raise the stakes and everything um, I just prefer the truth and um, so there's a okay the whole the whole thing back to looks and everything Brittany Murphy was a natural brunette she's from New Jersey her friend also wanted to be an actor what was her friend's name in the thing I can't remember what the friend's name was um, the friend was also an aspiring actress um, they did plays together in high school and she's the friend is blonde haired blue eyed tall and skinny and then Brittany Murphy is curly haired brunette with brown eyes and a Jersey accent um, which eventually if you guys notice that eventually in real life her Jersey accent just disappears which that happens a lot you know like they they're like God oh, get rid of your accent um, I get what they're saying because at one point it's like they're like oh like she may look be like the, the Hollywood type girl where because the mom gets approached by an agent after a play where Brittany and her friend are dressed up as pirates. I'm like, okay, this looks very juvenile. And these girls are in, you know, high school. I'm like, I don't know if this is a real thing they did. But he, she gets approached. The mom's like, I'm going to talk to this guy on my own. And she even says, oh, I'm just surprised because usually they're approaching my daughter's friend I can't remember the daughter's friend or, you know Brittany's friend's name but um and she says to he says to the mom something to the effect of yeah well she looks Hollywood and she's got that look she may be blonde or whatever but your daughter has the everyday girl kind of look so basically in a way is saying that Brittany Murphy wasn't conventionally was unconventionally attractive um which I have to disagree. I mean, I think she was. Uh, maybe with brunette, when she was a brunette, she was considered that. And then eventually she did. There is a quote somewhere where she says she got more roles when she became a blonde. Um, that could be a thing. Um, I get what they're saying, but I feel like a lot of it, with the whole thing of her people saying she's chunky. And they want someone more skinnier for to play a heroin added. Like that was BS because she was skinny. <laughs> That's BS. I do get what they're saying though. They're saying that, um, you know, with television and film, it's like it's a visual medium. They want to see beautiful women where it's like they're blonde hair, blue eyed, and skinny and tall, and they have long legs. Da da da. And then even in the movie, she makes a comment saying like. Oh, I actually have to have a skill. So she's acting like she's unconventionally attractive. Like, you know, I even was watching a video where they're like, that's great. There should, this woman was like saying, that's great. There should be more conventionally attractive people in Hollywood, but they have to make up for it with talent because you get a lot of people in Hollywood who are just blonde hair, big blue, big boobs, and they're not really that talented of actresses. Okay. Marilyn Monroe, I'm sorry. Like, I know she's a sex symbol. She wasn't really an actress. She was just eye candy. And I don't hate Marilyn Monroe. I think she's a great symbol of old Hollywood, but she was just eye candy. 
Um, I think she even angered Laurence Olivier when they did it. What was it called? Like Prince and the Showgirl? I think that's what it was called. Um, because she just, you know, she was happy to be there and happy to work with people, but I don't think she was really up to his standards. I mean, he was a serious actor, like, thespian type guy, but still. Oh my gosh. I get what they're saying, but, I mean, there's just, and... Jo go going off of that with the whole thing where they're saying she's chunky which I, I wasn't buying one bit she was not chunky um I'm just looking at my there's stuff there's a lot of moments during this movie where I was like that doesn't seem correct that seems BS and I was, most of the time I was right. Um, going, uh, you know, entering this topic with, um, <laughs> it's kind of a silly topic to enter, but there is horrible wigs in this movie. And I think the worst of it was Alicia, the, the girl that played Alicia Silverstone. It's like, she introduces her friend from New Jersey, the uh, aspiring actor. And she's like, oh, this is Alicia. And the girl, she they show her on screen, and I was like, ooh, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, that wig is gonna be in my nightmares. She had by far the worst. I know there there were some bad wigs. Like I would say, like the first wig with uh, like you see teenage Brittany Murphy, and she's got like the really cur like the curls. Okay, that was kind of bad, but the Alicia Silverstone one, like you could, there are wigs that look real. Like, it grows from someone's head. Like, it looks like it's growing from your head. And it's all fit. It, this just looked like... Oh, my gosh. It looked horrible. I was like, nobody... If I was the actress, I'd be, like, looking in the mirror, like... Yeah, honey. That's not gonna work. And then going back to my my, to my topic. Um, they gave... The guy, which, by the way, I love this act. I think he's adorable. He's in Fuller House. He's really funny. He's adorable. I don't think I can say that enough. Um, they gave him, like, the grossest hair. Like, he was, like, oil slick. Like, the, the his bangs or whatever were, like... He had the short hairdo, and his bangs were, like... Looked like they were slick. And they just... It looked gross. And I looked up a picture of that photo shoot they did for the DVD cover, because they did a movie, it was Ashton Kutcher and Brittany Murphy, and they dated in real life. I think a lot of people know that. They did Just Married, and I looked up, they recreated that photo shoot for the DVD cover and the movie poster, or whatever. Ashton had like longer hair, and it did not look like that. So on top of getting this, giving this guy, it's, the hair is not accurate, and you're giving him un, necessarily gross hair. If Ashton had gross hair in that time of his life, okay, that's forgiven. You'd be like, okay, like, that's realistic. But I was like, I don't think he had that gross of hair. And I looked it up, and I'm like, it's BS. Like, and then there's a part where he's kissing her, and his hair, like, he's got this slick of a hair that just goes down, and it touches her face, and I'm like, ugh, no! The wigs! Was this, what was the budget, like $20 for this entire movie? And I found out it took 16 days to shoot, which, don't get me wrong, like, there's been movies that have been shot in, like, half that time that are amazing. Just, this is not one of them. Um, I just, um, so many things about this movie. I've already been talking for 24 minutes, but, um, <laughs> The one thing about, the, one part about this movie that I kind of laughed about a little bit, um, was when, it was after Britney had made a lot of movies, um, this is probably like 2000 and, I don't know, it's like early 2000s, and it's after 2001, so it's probably like 2003-ish, her friend that was also the inspiring actress, I can't remember her name, comes to visit her in LA, and, uh, is staying in Britney's house. and It's a big house, so she kind of gets lost. She's like, oh, I don't know which way to go. Like, uh. um, She goes to the, the fridge, and Brit where Britney and the mom are, like, in the kitchen, and the, the friend asks 
do you have any bacon? Or where's the bacon? And the, and they kind of were like laughing at her a bit. And the friend takes out, she kind of points to it in the fridge, in Brittany's fridge, she goes, what's this? And she's like, it's a kale smoothie. And then right after that, <laughs> right after the friend leaves the kitchen to go, I don't know, get dressed or something, she tells the mom, I just, what did she say? I just can't relate to her anymore. I just don't feel like I relate to her. And I'm just like, because she wants bacon instead of freaking a kale smoothie? <laughs> That's hilarious. I think they even mentioned that in, um, there's an article where it's like 10 hot mess moments. And I think we should look at it. Um, let me get it queued up. Now, I I actually thought it was going to be harder for me to get through this movie, but it actually, um, I thought I was going to be furious, and I'm not as furious. I'm just kind of like, uh, I feel like, like they just showed a bunch of depressing stuff, and I just highly doubt that it was that depressing. I mean, what do I know? But still... Why did we have to... A lot of the stuff that I was, like, questioning, I was, like, 100% right about. Like, I would... Or there would be nothing that would, um... Uh, back it up. Like, I didn't believe some stuff, and I'm just like... Did, was her husband really a paparazzi guy that was like, Hey, I'm a fan of yours. Like, I don't know. I We do know he was a writer slash producer. What was I looking up? Um... <laughs> um, where was it? Oh, wait. Brittany Murphy. Story. Get it all queued up. Ooh, I spelled that wrong. Gosh, this, this movie wasn't that hor. It just was not. Just save your four dollars. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, don't buy it. Okay, here we go. Ten hot mess moments in Lifetime's The Brittany Murphy Story. Lifetime, stop making biopics. For the love of Jesus. Maybe I'll talk about it. Maybe I'll have more to say. But this is on Rolling Stone. If it would load. Please load. Gosh, I'm sorry. Sometimes I'm having issues with, like... Oh my lordy lordy. Um, there's also weird moments. I feel like the acting was really, really weird and flat. Like, I think it was a script too in the beginning. And then it got kind of better. But then they had moments where, like, she would say, she said a line where she's like, I love to sing. I had to do happy feet next. And then the way she says it is just so cringe inducing. Like, some of the dialogue is just like, you know like she says I love to sing but she says it in such a weird way gosh why is it this not cooperating hello um but while I'm waiting um and the, the husband was saying something it sounded creepy as F where um, this, her husband says, I love dressing you. It was so weird. I was like, oh my goodness. Maybe this will actually reload. Okay, this is from Time Magazine. Time.com. So, we watch Lifetime's horrible Brittany Murphy biopics so you don't have to. Okay, there's only one reason to watch Lifetime's unauthorized Brittany Murphy biopic Saturday at 8 p.m., and that is to see the wigs. Um, her father, yeah, accuses the biopic itself of hideous, unauthorized, and completely untrue. Um... Okay, yeah, and I did read this. Um, another... 
everything was just so against like I feel like the universe was saying don't make this movie because they gave they casted Amanda Fuller and she gosh she had two days to prepare for the role I mean people go into auditions to play I feel like I read I was hearing something where Michelle Williams was talking about playing Marilyn Monroe and it's a movie from a few years uh, good amount of years ago it was good I thought she was good as Marilyn and she did research just to audition and you know what that's amazing these are the kinds of roles you do research before you walk in and an audition um let's see Um, Lifetime brushes over the revelation that Murphy's husband had an unsavory past. Yeah, that's another thing that pissed me off, was, um, was there was a woman in a restaurant. She came over to Brittany and was like, I need to tell you that that guy is, you know, bad news. He was apparently, he has, he has like, he hasn't paid rents, like, he's just fishy as hell. And then Brittany's like, I don't want to hear it, you know. And basically telling, and he gets arrested by the police. The immigration comes up and gets him because he has an expired visa. And they were engaged to marry. And... I feel like they got engaged super fast, okay? Um, you know, he's very sweet to her. He is a fan of hers. And, um, can't even see my framing. And everything like that. But, hello. But, what made me so angry is she goes home, she gets him out of jail, I would be immediately thinking, oh, well, he's after, sorry, this one looks off. He's, I would be thinking, he wants to marry me because he wants to become a citizen. Because when you marry an American, you can become, you become a citizen. You become an American citizen through marriage. Um, that's why there's a lot of um, horrible, fake marriages arranged stuff and uh she he comes back after being arrested and says I'll explain everything to you and I'll even pack my bags if you want me to and she just says no don't explain everything don't don't say anything and I'm like I understand when you want to keep a facade or like a an image of a person alive but I would be asking I, I let the guy tell a story like you know why this why that like is any of this true and then the next scene it's like cut they get married and then uh, another scene between them and when they're in their bedroom is uh he basically says, all those horrible things about me people have said are true. And he tells her, and she still kind of just doesn't want to hear it. But he wants to be open with her and up front. And then, like, and then he says, you make me want to be a better man. Okay, you know, cliche, cliche, whatever. But the thing is, like, why, I'd be, I'd be questioning him. I'd be like, hey, what's your story? And... We'll see, like, where we want to go from there, if I still want to marry you, da 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 She just wants to, hopefully that wasn't, like, all Britney said was the past is the past. Like, ugh. And, oh yeah, it says right here, um, a cliche, when I'm with you, you make me want to be a better man. And the couple just moves on. Um, 
this is true too. The film was shot in 16 days. Seems like less time was spent writing the script. Yeah, the script was kind of weak. Um, uh, this says the Brittany Murphy story isn't guilty of smearing the actress's memory. It's a crime is more insidious. It makes the young, talented actress seem entirely forgettable. Oh, yeah. She deserved so much better than that. She deserved... She did not deserve that. Gosh. Wow. Um... Yeah. You know, and then they, they end with, like, saying, um, what, you know, was saying she died of. And it, they said it was a mixture of pneumonia, anemia, and also having, uh, they said chronic anemia. And also having, you know, a bunch of, uh, uh, prescription drugs in her and antibiotics. And I could tell you, you know, she was over-medicated. And people are trying to play it off like Hollywood killed her. And, you know, it could be true, because I think it, it was actually a thing where she was being accused of doing cocaine and accused of doing drugs just because she lost a lot of weight, I guess, in, in the early 2000s, which is horrible. And um, she did have health issues. Um, I think even her half-brother has said that, has said that she has, uh, you know, an issue that's not very well known, but she had it, and, um, also, too, um, where is I going with this? <laughs> Jeez. But, um, <laughs> that's what you're thought. But anyway, you know, she did have, uh, but then there's a, a part in the movie where she's very sick. Like, it's the year 2009. Like, she is very sick, but instead she just keeps taking, you know, he gives her, like, this cough medicine or this, like, you know, cold medicine. She just, like, she drinks some of it. And the mom's like, we need to call a doctor. She's like, no, no doctors. Or, no, no hospitals. Because she doesn't want people to think she's a junkie. Um, that's when, like... That kind of pissed me off because I feel like if that's really how it went down, where the mom was just like, okay, fine. The, the husband's like, okay, fine. We'll just let you, like, you know, they did, t they did look after her, but they're not doctors. I would have said, like, honey, it's either, you know, people think, you know, you're a junkie for a, while, a little while longer, or you freaking die. And, and unfortunately, she died, you know. She was so sick, like, you know, and, like, I would have then been, like, you know, like, honey, I don't care, I'm taking you to the hospital, it's, you know, you're in bad shape, like, that's when you go, let go, and, you know, and then the morning that they found her, uh, the mom's like, we're gonna uh, take all this stuff and just get out of here. I'm like, where are you gonna go? I hope, uh, were you gonna go to the a hospital or are you just gonna like, let's go to a different, you know, I don't know. It's just, I would say you should skip this one. I feel like five years after she passed, and apparently it was a year after the toxicology report came out. I feel like part of it was kind of too soon, but, and then they make this depressing movie, and part of it is just BS, where it's like, she wasn't chunky, um, and they're trying to be like, oh, we need you to be skinnier, because you're going to play Janis Joplin, just like, uh, it wasn't that, that horrible, it's just like, the, the the wigs were hilarious and like just like whoa like nobody saw this and and then like that one thing with the kale and the bacon like that killed me but oh my gosh i can't see myself watching this again just it's just 
I don't know, wasn't that interesting. It was just kind of like, why not go into some more on-set stuff? Because this movie showed, like, more lows than her career highs. And the career highs didn't even seem like that big of a deal. It was like, she's at a, at a you know, a premiere and be like, oh yeah, Dakota Fanning is such a good actress. It's like, she had career highs, okay? And the whole thing of, uh, you know, the final thoughts is like, yeah, like, I just wish there was if you're gonna do this movie there needs to be better casting and there needs to be consulting of family members and there needs to be you know going with the better casting a person who captures the essence because she had that bubbly stuff but I'm not gonna be that person that's like bullying the actors being like oh you look nothing like them because they probably thought they were doing something good and I could from what I've read what what the actors have said you know, they thought, they didn't think they are doing any harm. I mean, they're not doing any harm. I mean, it's just like, it's just not that good of a movie. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I feel like this movie, uh, I thought I actually was going to have more like malicious, not malicious, but more things to say about it when it comes to like, um, just how horrible it was but there was uh, like I was saying on the live reaction there was a couple of shots that I liked actually and they had the mom's character they had mom the mom in there and um there's a shot I will give them credit where credit you know for good stuff where credit is due um first they got a cute boy to play Ashton Kutcher and I, in this article I read they said he's probably the only stable character I'm like yeah um, Ashta Kutcher I liked. He was really cute. Like, they got actor to play him. <laughs> his hair, though. Ooh, that oil slick. Oil spill on his hair. Um, and then I liked a couple of shots with the mom. There's a, a part where um, they're on the set of Clueless and Brittany Murphy is saying to her mom that, Oh, like, I'm not pretty. Like, look at Alicia. She's beautiful. And the mom says, You're beautiful, but in a different way. And I'm just like, is this mom basically saying her own daughter not physically appealing? Like, you have a beautiful heart. It's like when people go, oh, you have beauty on the inside, but you're not beauty on the outside. Like, that line was kind of messed up. But then she has this cool, there's a cool moment where there's Alicia in front of a mirror and looking at herself. She's probably thinking, what the hell with this wig? <laughs> but um, she's looking at herself in the mirror, and then the mom's face shows up, like you see, and she's looking in Alicia's mirror. She's looking at Alicia. And then she comes, and then the real, not the reflection, the ref it's just the reflection and Alicia in like the background, but you can see, it, and then the mom comes into the picture. And then she turns to Brittany and she says something to her. I thought that was a nice touch. How she's showing and she's looking at Alicia and trying to, you know, she's hearing her daughter's words and she's like, I thought that was good. I like that little trick they did. And I also like this part where um, Brittany introduce, basically tells her mom she's engaged and I, I think it was the first time she met Simon, the husband, and um, there's, the mom is just like, oh, yay, like, cool, like, not so sure about this guy, because he's kind of fishy, um, and she's making tea in the teapot, just, you know, it screams, it boils, and I think that was really, like, good symbolic thing, so I will say that, they did that, those things, couple things nicely, but everything else, it's just, why, why do it, nobody was thinking, like, Oh, I'm not gonna judge the actors for being a part of it because you know you never know they you know there's times when you think oh it's a great project a lot of people are gonna love this thing and then they have nothing but goodness or good in their hearts and then they're just like oh people don't like this movie very much or they may be desperate for a job I don't know um I know that I I respect that Amanda Fuller is who played Brittany is a fan has always been a fan of hers um yeah uh it's kind of like, that's cool, and 
you know, someone who's, who's familiar with the person at least. And um, I mean, I love Gilda Radner. I don't think I would ever play her in a biopic. I mean, that's already been done, but still, that's all I have to say. And see you in the next video. This is really long.